Tuna maswali hapa kwa kiasi cha haja. Sasa kila mmoja tufanye ni kwamba kwanza na maswali ambayo ya kukaribu zaidi na mada ya kongamano. Ah uh, ili kwamba tukiishiwa na muda kabla kumalize maswali iwe angalau yale yanayohusiana na mada zile tume. Kumaliza sawa. Basi tujaribu sana kujibu maswali yote ambayo yameletwa hapa kadi ni bwana takadi kuwezesha. So tutasoma kwa Kiswahili ili kwa manyoto mjue yanaulizwa yapi hapo. Alafu tutafsiri kwa Kiingereza. Alafu tutafsiri kwa Japanese. Sawa. Okay. Swali la kwanza basi. Mimi jambo moja nitaongeza. Uta, Kuna baadhi ya maswali ambayo yanafanana sana. Ili kwamba kujibu moja itakuwa imejibu yale mengine. So kuna pingine swali la hapa litajibiwa moja kwa moja maana yake limefanana na lingine ambalo limeuliza kwa njia hii. Sawa jamani? Haya. Kuna mtu hapa anauliza mwalimu ni nini kuzaliwa mara ya pili? Na mtu anazaliwaje mara ya pili? What does it mean to be born again and how is one born again? Ah uh, pengine utachanganya hilo na swala ambalo uliniuliza wewe na umelegeshewa tena eh so question you ask is been thrown back at you kati ya kuzaliwa mara ya pili na kutubu na kuamini ni kipi huja kwanza katika maisha ya mkristo na ni hivi between being born again and repentance and faith which one comes first in the life of a Christian and how? So if you can combine those two together. Yeah. What does it mean to be born again and how does it happen? And then which one comes first and how? May I say that I love Q&A time. Anapenda kwanza kusema kwamba anapenda sana kipindi kama hiki cha maswali na majibu. Because I learn about you. Mana, najifunda kuwa huku nini? I understand what your questions are. Ninaelewa maswala yenu ni yapi? I know some people try to trick me, I know that. Najua wapo njina mwata jarimu kumyekea mitego, hindo kia nakijua. But I also have an answer for that one. Elahini hata kwa mitego kia na majibu. But I think this could be very profitable. Lakini naamini kwamba hili litakuwa la faida sana. Because for most of you these are the burning questions. Maana kwa wengi wenu haya ndio maswali ambayo yanawatatiza sana. Or these are the questions that arise because of what I taught you. Au ndio maswali yanayoibuka kwa sababu ya yale ambayo tumewafundisha. So I encourage questions. Kwa hiyo nahimiza sana maswali. Okay. So about the new birth. Sasa kuhusiana na swala zima la kuzaliwa mara ya pili. The great passage is John Chapter 3. Andiko la msingi ni Yohana mlango wa 3. So you need to open your Bible then. Sasa unahitaji kufungua Biblia yako sawa, sio? I hope I have taught you you go to the Bible. Natumai nimeshawafunga sasa kama mnafaa kwenda kwenye Biblia zenu. And here in John chapter 3 there's a man called Nicodemus. Na hapa kwenye mlango wa Tatu kwa jamaa wetu ni Kodemo. He is a great religious man. Ni mtu wa dini sana. Arisi. Parisai. That means he's a he's very knowledgeable in the Bible. Hii ina maana kwamba anafahamu sana maandiko. He's one of the high members of society. Ni mmoja kati ya wale watu wanasaba ya juu sana katika jamii. He's even a teacher of the Bible. Pia ni mwalimu wa Biblia. And he wants to know how he can um no, actually he doesn't want to know anything, does he? Sorry. Um he wants to know about Jesus, who he is. Haja yake sana nataka kujua Yesu ni mtu wa namna gani. Actually he doesn't ask the question. Haulizi swali basa. He says we know you're from God. Anasema tunajua umetoka kwa Mungu because of the work that you do. But Jesus says to this man, 
Lakini Yesu anamwambia huyu jamaa, you've got to be born again. Ya kwamba lazima uzaliwe mara ya pili. It could be born from above. Ah uh, inaweza kuwa ni kuzaliwa kutoka juu. The same word in the original. Ni neno moja katika lugha zile za ki za kitabu za asili za Biblia. But without that you can't see the kingdom of God verse 3. Like, like and you can't enter the kingdom of God verse 5. Na falma, huku, and this new birth has to do with the work of the Holy Spirit. I mean, did you give birth to yourself? No. Obviously it's not your will to be born. So it's interesting Jesus has taken this picture to describe becoming a Christian. And he says in verse 8 it's like the wind. Well, we can see the wind in the trees, can't we? The trees are moving. And when it's blowing hard, you can hear it. But you don't know where it's coming from. And you don't know where it's going. You only hear the effects of the wind. And Jesus says verse 8, it's like that with everyone who is born of the Spirit. You don't see the Spirit coming into a person or leaving the person but you see the change in the person. Okay, so how is one born again? There's nothing you can do. I mean, that's why it's birth. You've got to be born before you can do anything. So who chooses that you're born again? God. God. The Holy Spirit. Again, you may not like that teaching, but that's the teaching. Just keep your hand there, just turn back to chapter 1. Verses 12 and 13. So here are people who can claim the, <coughs> the status of being children of God because they believe. But he says these people believe because they were born. They didn't get born because they believed. They believed because they were born. And it says they were not born of blood. The 13. Nor the will of the flesh. Nor the will of man. But of God. If God is the parent then it's by the will of God that we're born. So then, you can't tell a person how to be born again. It's like telling a dead person, 
This is how you 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 believe. They can't hear you. They can't do anything. Okay, so then I think the second question was, how do you know if you're born again? Well, your mother's tell me, how do you know if the baby you've given birth to is alive? How? How do you know? You give it a... And then you know it's alive, don't you? Don't your babies cry when they get born? So, birth, then life. Kuzaliwa, kisha uhai. Evidence of life. Kuna ushahidi wa uhai. So what's the evidence someone's been born again? Asa, itibati kwa mamtu kuzaliwa mara pili nini? It's that they believe and repent. Ni kwamba wanaamini na wanatubu. The first acts of someone who's been made spiritually alive. Matendo ya kwanza ya mtu aliyefanywa hai katika roho is those spiritual acts of faith and repentance. Vile vitendo vya kiroho yaani kuamini na kutubu. Look at John 3:6. Tazama Yohana 3:6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Kilichozaliwa kwa mwili ni mwili. Flesh can only give birth to flesh. Mwili unaweza tu kuzaa mwili. You know a dog gives birth to a dog. Mbwa anazaa mbwa tu. Right. So flesh, whatever flesh is, it produces or it reproduces itself. Sasa kama mwili ulivyo inajizalisha. Flesh is what man can do. Mwili ni kile mwanadamu anaweza kufanya. Spirit is what only God can do. And Jesus says, that which is born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is Spirit. So how can something which is of the Spirit be produced? And faith, for example, is a spiritual fruit. Na imani ni tunda la roho. You need the Holy Spirit. Unamhitaji roho mtakatifu. You can't do it yourself. Hauwezi kuifanya mwenyewe. Flesh cannot produce spirit. Mwili hauwezi kuzaa roho. Only the Holy Spirit can. Ni roho mtakatifu tu anaweza. So when you see fruit that the Holy Spirit has produced, you know the new birth has taken place. Basi ukiona yale matunda ambayo roho mtakatifu tu anaweza kuyazalisha unajua mtu kadhalika mara pili So which comes first? Asa kinachotangulia kipi? The birth of the Holy Spirit. Kuzaliwa kwa roho mtakatifu. And then all the fruit like fruit and repentance. Alafu matunda yanafuata kama toba na imani. I think I've answered the question. Na kile swali hilo limejibiwa. Sawa? So, do you need anything more? Maybe you know, many of you have got my book called Becoming a Christian. I think. I know he says he's read it. Yes, we have a Anyway, there's a lady called Lydia. Na mama pale anaitwa Lydia in Acts chapter 16. Kwenye Mateo 16. She's listening to Paul preach. Anamsikiza Paulo akihubiri. She's not alone. Hayuko peke yake. But we read as she listens to the gospel, na anaposikia injili, the Lord opened her heart. Bwana akafungua moyo wake to believe what Paul was preaching. 
kwa mimi kile power ilikuwa kimbili now that means her heart was closed doesn't it ina maana kama moyo wake ulikuwa umefungwa and it suddenly closed nothing can enter in kama kitu kimefungwa hamna kiingiacho ndani so first of all God opens the heart kwanza Mungu anafungua moyo wake and then the words can enter in alafu maneno yanaweza kuingia ndani and only then alafu hapo tu does she believe ndiye anaweza kuamini what it says acts 16:14 matendo 16:14 inasema We read about people in Acts chapter 18. Tunasoma watu kwenye Matendo 18 that through grace they believe. Ya kwamba kupitia kwa neema waliamini. And so we go on and on just one more. Acts Mwati, chapter 13. Matendo 13. As many as were appointed to eternal life believe. Wale walio pangiwa uzima wa milele waliamini first god does something kwanza mungu anaanzisha jambo and then you respond alafu unaitia but that response is guaranteed lakini mwitikio ule ni wa hakika because god gives you life maana kwenye mungu ndiye anayekupatia uzima okay the thing that you muulizaji aliulizwa maana yake nini kuzaliwa mara hii sio na nafikiri mwalimu ameshajibu kwa njia ambayo ni wazi kabisa kile tu ambacho ningeongezea ni kwamba katika maandiko hiyo hiyo ile swala zima la kuzaliwa mara pili inazungumziwa katika njia zingine baadhi yazo mwalimu ametaja kwa mfano kuzaliwa mara pili pia katika biblia inazungumziwa katika lugha ya kupatiwa uhai eh kuhuishwa So, kuna picha ya mtu ambaye alikuwa hayupo akazaliwa kuna picha nyingine ya mtu aliyekuwa amekufa akafu kufuka hiyo pia lugha ile ile bado kuna kitabu cha Ezekiel kwa mfano na vinginevyo kuna taswira ya kubadilishiwa moyo kulikuwa na moyo wa jiwe unaekewa moyo wa nyama kuliwa moyo kama kwa mfano Lydia okay alafu kuna kuumbwa to be created anew kuumbwa kuwa kiumbe kipya so hizo zote ni picha mbalimbali ambazo zote zinaashiria hoja moja hii sawa kwa hiyo ukienda kwenye biblia pengine utakuta mahali hawajatumia neno kuzaliwa mara ya pili wametumia kuhuishwa au kupewa moyo mpya au kuumbwa upya ni wazo moja hii sawa just give me other you are even resurrection from the dead is the picture kuhuishwa yes exactly Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Ah, sorry, sorry, I think mean, just a comment on this. Kuna mtu anauza hapa, hao ambao wanaongea kwa lugha utajuaje ni roho wa Mungu? These people who speak it out. How do you know it is spirit? Okay? Um Yeah, it's just a comment on that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm only throwing it in there because of what you talked about the fruit of the spirit and now yeah so you can just have that it's just that my answer is going to shock you ni kwamba jawabu langu litawaanisha kweli i don't believe there's such a thing as speaking in tongues today ah but it's here yeye hami na mimi vile vile siamini ya kwamba leo hii pana swala zima la kuongea kwa Mungu. What you are hearing is not the tongues of the Bible. Kile unachokisikia kikizungumzwa leo makanisani sio lugha zile za Biblia. The tongues of the Bible are other languages. Lugha za Biblia zilikuwa ni lugha halisi. It's like you hear me speak now all of a sudden in Kigiriama. Ni kama hivi sasa umsikize mwalimu huyu anaongea Kigiriama. I don't know one word. Na mimi sijawahi kujifunza Kigiriama kabisa. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Hayo ndio yaliyofanyika siku ya Pentecost. They spoke languages that could be heard. Waliongea lugha za kueleweka zilizopo. And then secondly I believe that tongues are the same as prophecy. Alafu pili anaamini kwamba lugha na unabii ni sawa. 
just in another language. Ni unabii katika lugha tofauti. And I don't believe that people are prophesying um, like they're prophesying in the Bible. Na siamini kwamba leo hii wapo manabii wanaotabiri kama wale manabii wa Biblia. This is actually quite important. Because if you believe that God is speaking through tongues and prophecy, then that's very exciting, isn't it? You know, I'm sitting here. And suddenly I get up. I tell you, God spoken to me. I say, that says the Lord. I imagine that God is right with us like that. Wow. And so we put the Bible aside. That's the danger. And that's what's happening. And so men and women can say whatever they like today. Sasa wake kwa ume wanaweza kusema wanayataka leo. 2024 is going to be the year of blessing. Na watabiria kwamba mwaka wa 2024 ni mwaka wako wa baraka. Alafu na ngoja kwa nini? So please. Um, spiritual gifts are not the evidence that you have the spirit. Aha, wasikia hilo. Vipawa vile vya roho sio ushahidi kwamba mtu anaye roho. Judas was an apostle. Yuda alikuwa mtume. He betrayed Jesus. Alimsaliti Kristo. But nobody suspected him. Lakini hakuna aliyekuwa na mashaka naye. So it seems like he did the same miracles that the other ones did. Then in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, 23, Jesus says on the day of judgment, many will say, did we not do mighty works in your name? Hatukufanya kazi kubwa makazi kubwa kubwa kwa jina lako. Did we not prophesy in your name? Hatukutabiri kwa jina lako. Um what's the other? Did many mighty works. Yes, thank you. Cast out demons in your name. Eh hatukutoa pepo kwa jina lako. Jesus didn't say you liar. Yesu alisema ninyi waongo mfanye mambo haya. He said you evil. Alisema ninyi watu wao. Yeah, you did those things. But you are not you're not my people. Do you understand that there are signs and wonders of the devil? But I'll tell you what the devil can't do. He can't make you love other Christians. Aweze kukufanya wewe kuwapenda wa Kristo wengine. He's he's the murderer from the beginning. Mana yeye ni muwaji tangu mwanzo. He can't give you joy. Aweze kukupatia furaha ya Bwana. He can't give you peace in your heart. Aweze kukupatia amani katika moyo wako. And those are the fruit of the spirit, don't they? Hayo ndio matunda ya roho sio. Love, joy, so let me be a bit silly. <laughs> a man can stand here and say I'm speaking tongues the whole day until tomorrow. It doesn't mean he has the spirit. But show me a humble man. So in the name of Jesus, he loves the people of God. <laughs> There's the person who's been born again. Right. We're putting the emphasis in the wrong place. We're like children. You take children to a, a toy shop. 
And they see a toy with many bright colors. That's the one they want. And so today, uh, people want those exciting things. But that's not Christianity. You read Paul in 1 Corinthians 14 about tongues and prophecy. He says, don't be children. Let's be mature. We want holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord.
what I will do, we will just look at the food. Just to clarify that. I understand what you okay. said. Thank you very much. You want to add anything? Okay. Sorry. Matendo Billy Wafan? What I was saying, Ma he's asking which passages can prove that these were actually tongues, languages of men. And you mentioned the rain. Acts 2. What I was saying, 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 what Another question then. Almost similar to the earlier one of being born again. This is another aspect of salvation. J naweza kujuaje kama mimi nimehesabiwa hapa How do I know that I've been justified? Um, combine that with this nitakuwa na uhakika gani kwamba nimeoka Ashua the salvation How do I get it? Justification is through faith if you believe, you're justified. So really the question is, how do you know you have faith? And that's uh, needs a longer answer. Because there's false faith. There are, there are people in the Bible of whom it says they had faith, but it was not saving faith. There's people who believe for a while. And then they turn back. We may call that temporary faith. You read that in the parable of the sower, for example. There's a faith which is without works. Which is dead. You read that in James chapter 2. Because faith works by love. Galatians chapter 5. There's the faith, listen to this one. There's the faith of signs and wonders. You go to some meeting and something happens at the front. You see a man, you were told he was lame. And he jumps up. Oh, you say, praise the Lord. I now believe. And if that's all your faith is, it's not true. So you've got John chapter, John's Gospel chapter 2. It says, many believe when they saw the signs that Jesus did. And one of them was Nicodemus. He believed, didn't he? He said, you're from God. You're a believer then, isn't he? But no, he wasn't. Jesus says, you're not born again. So you're not in the kingdom. To these people we read, Jesus didn't believe in them. He didn't trust himself to them as believers. And I fear Kenya is filled with such people. Who, because of signs and wonders, they think they've sinned. 
Watu wanafikiri kwamba kwa kuona ishara na miujiza they say they believe. Wanaona basi wameamini. But it's not a true faith. Ni sio imani ya kweli. So what's the evidence that you believe? Sasa ishara kwamba umeamini ni ipi? Well, what does it mean to believe? Maana yake nini kuamini? It means you're trusting God. Inamaanisha kwamba unamtegemea Mungu. You're trusting that Jesus Christ is the savior from your sins. Unategemea kwamba Yesu Kristo ndiye mwokozi kutokana na dhambi zako. So you confess your sin to God. Umefikiri dhambi zako kwa Mungu. As your great need. Kama hitaji lako kuu. Jesus Christ is the only hope you have. Yesu pekee, Yesu Kristo pekee ndiye tumaini ulionalo. And now you want to turn away from sin. Na sasa unataka kuziacha dhambi and follow Christ. Na kumfuata Kristo. That's a believer. Muamini mtu wa namna hiyo. So the things are not true of you. Kama haya mambo si kweli kwa kuhusu. Then you're not a believer. Wewe si muamini. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus. Na unahitaji kuamini bwana Yesu Kristo. Mhm. Sante sana. Mwalimu umesema, umesema kila matukio yanayofanyika kwetu yanamtukuza Mungu. Swali langu ni hili. Wale watakao enda jehana watakuwa wanamtukuza Mungu kivipi huko? You say all things that happen to us glorify God. My question is how will those who end up in hell glorify God there? That's a very good question. Swali nzuri sana. It's not really that difficult. Si swali zito sana vile. The trouble is we only think of God's character as love. Swala ni kwamba tunamdhania Mungu kwamba tabia yake ndio moja tu ya upendo. But God is rightly angry against sinners. Lakini Mungu pia ana hasira kama inavyopasa juu ya wenye dhambi. Just as you are. Kama ulivyo wewe. When you heard about Shikahola. Uliposikia kuhusu Shakahola. Were you happy about that? Ulifurahia hiyo? You were angry. Ulikuwa na hasira. Kweli? So such a thing could happen in your country. Ya kwamba jambo kama hilo lingefanyika katika nchi yetu. Such wickedness. Uovu wa namna hiyo. And if the past is found guilty. Na ikiwa yule mhubiri atapatikana na hatia. We'll be happy if he's punished. Tutafurahi akiadhibiwa kwa hili. It's what he deserves. Niba na mustahili. And we'll say good on the government. Na tutapongeza serikali. Wamesema wamefanya vizuri kumwadhibu. You know in the book of Revelation when it pictures in chapter 19 the destruction of what's called Babylon the people of God say hallelujah you can read it in Revelation 19 verse 1 hallelujah Look at verse 3. Hallelujah. The smoke of her goes up forever and ever. Hallelujah. God is glorified in the judgment of the wicked. Because he said, if you sin, you'll die. So if a sinner doesn't die, who is God then? He speaks and his words are nothing. So God is glorified. Both in the salvation of his people and in the punishment of the lost. Now this is the way I picture it. 
Mimi naangalia hivi. A dark cloud comes over. Wingu la giza linakuja. And it starts to rain. Unaanza kunyesha. But all of a sudden there's a rainbow. Alafu ghafla pana upinde. And that dark cloud is behind the rainbow. Na lile wingu jeusi liko nyuma ya ule upinde. That rainbow is glorious. Upinde una utukufu. Right? That's the best rainbow you've ever seen. The rainbow is like God's mercy. The dark cloud is like God's judgment. You see the glory of God in mercy. Against the dark background of his judgment. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so, um, we have a hymn that says, um, 125. Um, oh, how's this um, it take, it's based on Micah, Prophet Micah. Now, it's that the grace of God shines more brightly than any other attribute of God. But all that God does glorifies his different attributes, including judgment. Okay. It's, it's a difficult um, thought. But let's please understand who God is. We treat God like a man today. People are dancing around. Shouting. That's playing. Yeah, but dancing is the same one. Okay. Yeah. That's why I'm pointing it out. Um, people are shouting their heads off. I've heard people banging on the wall. Is that the way to behave in the presence of God? Do you remember Peter? He was fishing with Jesus. And they caught nothing. And Jesus said, just put the net here. And Peter was a very experienced fisherman. He knew where he found fish. And when they caught so many that the nets were breaking, he looked at Jesus. And he knew Jesus was more than a man. So did he run up to Jesus and give him a hug? What did he say? Go away, Jesus. Because I'm sinful. See, we've lost that idea of the greatness of God. When people had a vision of God, they fell as dead. Even the New Testament says, our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, verse 29. Do you get near fire? Hey, you run from it, don't you? That's our problem. We've lost sight of who God is. In his great glory. 
katika utukufu wake. Now am I saying we are to fear? No. Je, nasema kwamba basi tu tuna aa. Am I saying we to run away? No. Je, nasema tutoroke aa. But we are to be filled with respect. Lakini lazima tujawe na kicho. Kicho. Alright, Why aren't women supposed to be pastors? Swala lingine. Kama mwanamke hafai kuchunga kanisa, je wale wachungaji wanawa wafanye nini? Second question, third. Je, hata kama hawawezi kuwa wachungaji hawa wanawa, je wanaweza kuhubiri? Um, can they preach? So, three questions in one. Um, why is it the women cannot be pastors? Those who are already pastors what should, they be, what should they do now? And then can women preach? The take question. We started by saying that the Bible is the final authority. And the Bible very clearly says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 Na Biblia wazi wazi imesema kwenye Timotheo wa kwanza mla wa pili Where Paul is talking about the church Mali Paulo anaongea kuhusu kanisa He says in verse 12 Anasema mstari wa 12 wa Timotheo wa kwanza mla wa pili huko pale kuanzia mstari wa 12 I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man Anasema simpi mwanamke ruhusa ya kufundisha wala kutawala mwanamume. Rather she is to remain silent. Ila bali awe katika utulivu. And what's the reason? Sababu ni gani? The reason is not culture. Sababu sio utamaduni. It's not because that's the way they did it si, in Ephesus. Si kwa sababu ndivyo walivyofanya kule Efeso, hasha. He says in verse 13. Anasema kwenye mstari 13. For Adam was formed first. That's reason number one. Reason number two. Verse 14. Adam was not deceived. But the woman was deceived. And became a transgressor. So the second reason is what happened at the fall. So that's not culture. That's what happened at the beginning. So that's the reason. Now, if you can show me that my interpretation is wrong, okay? If you can show me there are women preachers and pastors, fine. I don't know any myself. So let's just follow the Bible. My friends, that's been the teaching of the church since the beginning. <laughs> it's only recently that women have become pastors. Do, do you know that? Maybe the last hundred, at the most, 150 years. You may not like it. You should, because it's in God's word. And if you are a a preaching woman today, then please stop. It's that simple. Isn't it? If, God, if God says don't do it, then don't do it. You see, I'm afraid what the church is doing, the church is following the world. 
the world says, actually today, men and women are the same. Actually, today in the West, there's no woman or man anymore. That's sexist language. Anyway, that's another subject. But the, the biblical teaching is very beautiful. Men and women are equal. We are both made in the image of God. We have both sinned. Although you can see here that Eve was deceived. And it seems to suggest, and you'll excuse me, but it does seem to suggest that women are more easily deceived. And I'm sorry, that's true. That's, true. that's not to say you're bad. You have, you have strengths that we men don't have. We have our weaknesses. You are very trusting. And you're very kind. And that's why you're easily deceived. Just read in the New Testament. It talks about uh, preachers going into houses and deceiving women, widows. Anyway, uh, we're equal in sin. We're equal in salvation, <laughs> but we have different responsibilities <laughs> according to the gift given. <laughs> we men are to lead. And the trouble is today, men don't want to lead. Society, <laughs> society has made men, I want to say, Wimps, children. Uh -huh. That's what sin has done. And in the church, we want men to lead. And I, I believe that you women. If you have men who will lead you truly, you'll be very happy. I don't know, but the trouble is often the men are not there. So this is a call to us men. Our dear ladies, they need to be led. And when you do that, they'll appreciate it. And of course, you don't lead by a whip. You lead by love. Right? It's a big subject. But you know this is biblical, don't you? And this is the best for society. Society is being torn apart. Because you women want to be independent of men. And I understand why. Men just go to the market and drink. And you want to work for your family. But that's the problem of men. 
So, men, let's not blame women, please. <laughs> let's blame ourselves. <laughs> Let me finish this. <laughs> But I think I've answered you from the Bible, haven't I? There's no pastor, church leader who's a woman in the Bible. There's Timothy, there's Titus, there's Epaphroditus, there's Epaphras, there's Silas, Silas. They're all men, aren't they? But what wonderful things women did. Jesus couldn't have done his ministry without women, could he? Read Romans 16 and all the greetings that Paul gives to women. Who have helped him so much. It's a bigger subject, but that's the biblical teaching. Please, obey the Lord joyfully. And let's pray for men. To stand up and leave. Yes. I I took all those questions about women in one way. We have others to Paulo anamaanisha nini? Anaposema kwamba Yesu alifanyika masikini ili tuwe matajiri. Ah, na pia anaashiria wakorinto wa pili. Ya? Ah, ni nane tisa au tisa nane? Ili ndilo baadhi ya wale wahubiri wengine wanadai kuitumia kuhubiri njili ya ufanisi. Oh, he became poor. He became poor that we, through his poverty, might become rich. Yeah, what does Paul mean in that passage? Chapter 8, verse 8, 9. 9. Yeah. Okay. Second, 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 8, 9. 9, 9. Good, thank you. Asante sana, kwa swali. Thank you for a question about the Bible. Asante, kuhusia na swali la kibiblia. And what it means. Na Can you just read it, please? Aha. Nitaiso makulinto wa pili. Nane tisa inasema hivi Maana mejua neema ya bwana wetu Yesu Kristo Jinsi alivyokuwa maskini kwa ajili yenu Ingawa alikuwa tajiri Ili kwamba nini mpate kuwa matajiri Kwa umaskini wake Well, you know what it doesn't mean, don't you? <laughs> Sasa moja kwa moja muna fahamu hivi hakemanishi nini it doesn't mean that Jesus had millions of shillings. And then he gave it all away. It doesn't mean rich in that sense. So what did Jesus give up? What did Jesus have that he gave up? No, he brought salvation, but he didn't have salvation, did he? He had it, and then he gave it up to become poor. Love. Love? His life. Oh, life, his life. Okay. It's something even before that. What did Jesus have in heaven? Glory. Glory. <coughs> Glory. <coughs> there we picture seated on the throne. Worshipped by all the heavenly inhabitants. He gave it all up, didn't he? And he came into this world as a little helpless baby. So that we might have the riches of glory. 
ili kwamba sisi tupate utajiri wa utukufu. Okay, that's what it means. Inamaanisha hiyo. Mm. Okay. It makes sense. Si unaelewa kile ambacho inamaanisha? Mm. Nafikiri andiko hapo litasaidia pale pia wa Filipi 2 kwa mfano, kuanzia mstari wa 5. Pia kuendelea chini inatupatia ni nini alikiacha na alikiacha kwa njia gani? Okay, swala lingine hili. Ah, uh, hebu twende nyanda tofauti kidogo. Je, ni sawa kwa Mkristo wa kweli? Mkristo wa kweli he kusherekea siku ya Christmas ama siku yake ya kuzaliwa? Should a true Christian celebrate Christmas and even their own birthdays? You give me the answer already. Kunaona na pale anajibu. Does the Bible command us to celebrate the birth of Christ? Asa ebo elewa hili swali. Je, tumeamrishwa mahali popote kwenye Biblia kusherehekea siku ya kuzaliwa kwa Yesu? Nimeamrishwa mahali popote. So therefore you don't have to. Kwa hiyo si jambo la lazima hilo. Does the Bible command you to celebrate your birthday? Je, Biblia imekuwa huru wewe kusherehekea siku ya kuzaliwa kwako? No. no. Pia haijaamrishwa. So you don't have to. Si lazima pia. We only must do it if God commands it. Sikiza, yale mambo ambayo kwetu ni lazima ni yale ambayo Mungu ameamuru. We don't even know the birthday of Jesus. Hata hakuna ajuwa Yesu alizaliwa nini? We don't even know the year in which he was born. Hata hatujui mwaka aliyosikiliwa. Because we're ignorant of that, that shows that it's not a command of God. Kwa sababu hatuna ufahamu na hilo, ni wazi kwamba Mungu hajatuamuru kusherehekea hilo. So it's your choice. Aha. Sasa kwa maswala haya, ni chaguo lako. Ni chaguo la? The trouble is there are so many traditions which are together with the celebration of the birth of Christ. Asa tatizo ni kwamba huku kusherehekea siku ya Christmas kumekuwa na tamaduni nyingi na itikadi nyingi zimeongezeka huko ndani. Things which you got nothing to do with the Bible. Mambo ambayo hayana uhusiano kabisa na Biblia. Why do people give me gifts at Christmas? Kwa nini watu wanipatia nini zawadi siku ya Christmas? Mimi I mean, the kings, if they were kings, they brought gifts to Jesus, didn't they? Wale mama yus, wale patia nani zawa? Christ. In in UK, we have Christmas trees. Ule wao wako na meet ya Christmas. What do they have to do with Bible? Nothing. Sina usi anogea na Bibi. And of course Christmas with Santa Claus. Alafu kuna yule bwana anayevaa mavazi mekundu na meupe. Personally I wish I could get rid of Christmas altogether. Kama ningekuwa nikutaka kwangu ningeondosha kabisa ile swala la kusherehekea Christmas. Because it's now a commercial celebration. Sikiza. Maana Christmas imekuwa ni shughuli ya kibiashara sasa. But if if you want to celebrate it lakini ukitaka kusherehekea come together to worship njoni pamoja basi muabudu if you want ukitaka thank god for the birth of jesus shukurini mungu kwa ajili ya kuzaliwa kwake read your accounts in the bible so many ma habari za kuzaliwa kwake na mambo yake katika biblia meet together as a family utaneni kama jamii you want to give gifts to one another you do that ukitaka kupeana zawadi moja moja kwa mwingine ni sawa but don't make it this big commercial thing that it is. Lakini msichukuliwe na hii hali ya biashara ambayo inaibika swala zima la Christmas. Where you just spend thousands and thousands of shillings. Ambao mnatumia maelfu kwa maelfu ya hela. Eating and drinking. Mnakula na kunywa. Same with your birthday. Hata siku ya kuzaliwa vile. People only think birthdays are big because that's what you had when you were a child. Watu wanaona siku ya kuzaliwa ni kubwa maana yake basi William wewe kutaka unakuwa mtoto. If you want to celebrate the person's birthday do it. Ukitaka kusherehekea siku ya kuzaliwa kwako 
Ni sawa. It's a time to give thanks to God, isn't it? Lakini vielewe ni sawa kama ni wakati wa kumshukuru Mungu, sio? Again, don't make it just an eating and drinking. Lakini wengi basi kula tu, kunywa tu, kujivijali tu. That's what the world does. Dunia inafanya hivyo, sio? We're not of the world. Na sisi wa dunia. Mm. Na kwa hiyo kimsingi mwalimu anasema kwamba si swala ambalo lazima halijaamriwa. Lakini si swala ambalo limekatazwa lakini tukilifanya tuifanye kwa kumbuka yote ufanyavyo kila ukinywa yafanye yote kwa utukufu wa nani? Amen. Jamani swala muhimu sana. Sawa? Okay. <coughs> yeah, we are almost done here. Um kuna swala hapa ambalo lina uhusiano sana na matumizi ya Biblia lakini muhimu sana. Sasa so, ukiwa unashuhudia mtu na kufunza mambo yaliyoko ndani ya Biblia. Wengine hutumia mstari mmoja kusukuma hoja, kuthibitisha hoja. Ingawaje mafundisho yao ni ya uongo. Je, njia nzuri ya kurekebisha ni ipi? Ama kuonyesha maandiko hayataki hivyo ni vipi? Na mwingine aliniambia hana makosa kwa sababu hata Paulo alifanya hivyo. I think it's the use of scripture he's talking about there. Yeah. That there are those who would uh, want to advance an argument and they would prove text. Just use one passage of scripture. And um, he's asking, how do you help such people to show them that's the wrong thing to do? To just use one scripture to establish a teaching or a doctrine. But then he says, he's tried helping somebody by telling them that it's the wrong way to, to go about it. And then the person asks him, even Paul did that. Like he doesn't supply where Paul did it, but that's what he says. So it's generally used as scripture. Yeah. You know, if the scripture says something once, that's enough. That's true. But, you must make sure that the interpretation is correct. Lazima uhakikishe hata kama imesemekana mara moja katika maandiko ya kwamba umetafsiri maandiko yale hivi sawa. The problem with taking a verse taabu ya kuchukua mstari if you take it out of its context na uiondosha katika muktadha wake you can misunderstand it. Utaelewa makosa. This is the example I use. Huu ndio mfano naotumia. The Bible says inasema, do not refuse one another. Musi nimane. Oh. That's lovely, isn't it? For a young man and a young girl. That's beautiful. And hiyo kama hiyo basi si la kupendeza sana hata kwa vijana wa kike na wa kiume. Si nimane. The Bible says don't refuse one another. Maana inasema wala musi nimane. But the context is marriage. Lakini muktadha wa amri hiyo ni katika ndoa, sio? So that's the danger of a proof text. Asa hatari ya kutumia vifungu kweke ni hiyo. You must make sure that you understand the context. Lazima uelewe muktadha wa mazingira yake na And then secondly, alafu If something only occurs once in the Bible, ikiwa Biblia you need to be especially careful. For example, the 1,000 years only occurs once in the Bible. Swala hili zima la miaka 1000 ya utawala wa takatifu na isoma. Inaonekana mara moja tu kwenye Revelation 20. And yet people build a whole theology a whole system on that na watu wamejenga muundo mzima wa theolojia juu ya ndiko hili yapatika mara moja so you you've, you've got to be careful that your interpretation fits in to other teaching in the bible lazima uwe mwangalifu sana hivi kwamba tafsiri yako ya maandiko yale yanawiana na mafundisho ya biblia kwa ujumla this is the illustration i give mfano kama huu Here's a box. 
Una kifurushi. And inside there are a thousand beach. Ndani pana shanga, shanga. Shanga. And so you go to take one. Una chukua shanga mmoja. A beautiful red one. Nyekundu ya kuvutia boy. But when you take it out you find other ones come out with it. Na ukiinua hivi unakuta kuna shanga zingine zimeshikamana na hiyo. Because they are all joined together with a thread. Maana zile shanga zote zimeshikamanishwa na nyuzi. And that's like the Bible. Biblia iko hivyo. You take one verse. Ukichukua mstari mmoja and you find it's joined to every other verse. Utakuta imeshikamanishwa na mstari mwingine mengi tu kwenye Biblia. And you're right it's a great danger that people use a verse. Na ni hatari kubwa kwamba watu hutumia mistari. I think false teachers this is their method. Walimu uongo ndio mbinu yao. Say like Jehovah's witnesses. Kama Jehovah's witnesses. Turn to Matthew chapter 2. Read the Bible again. And you read verse 8. Tayo nani? Now, let's go to the Song of Solomon chapter 2. Read the Bible again. And read verse 1. Tayo kwanza. Now, come on, let's go to Genesis. Now let's go to Genesis. Read the Bible. You're jumping all over the Bible. Na ruka kutoka huko kwenda kule kutoka kule huko. You can make the Bible mean anything that way. Sasa wewe unaweza ukafanya ukatumia mbinu hiyo kuisemesha Biblia kama wewe unavyotaka. Unaisemesha wewe. So the last thing. Jambo la mwisho. If you hear a new teaching Ukisikia fundisho jipya. Remember what I told you. Mbuga nitasema. Say thank you very much. Sema asante sana. But I'm going home. Lakini naenda nyumbani. I'm going to examine the scriptures. Naenda kuyachunguza maandiko. To see if what you're saying is correct. Kuona kama yale unayosema ni kweli. But I will not believe what you say until I examine the scriptures. Lakini sitoamini unayosema mpaka nimeona maandiko. You are not grieving the spirit when you do that. Ukifanya hivi bali hauguzilishi roho. Okay? Because it's the Holy Spirit in the Bible who tells you to do that. Maana roho wa Mungu ndani ya Biblia ndiye anayekushauri kufanya hivyo. It's when you don't do it. Ni wakati ambapo hauguzi mafundisho unayoyasikia ndipo napo kuzulisha roho. The Bible says test the spirit. Biblia inasema sijaribu roho. Mwisho kabisa last one last one very last one um, kwa nini waislamu si rahisi kubadilika kuwa wakristo why is it why is it that muslims don't convert christianity very easily oh fast part part two. why is it that muslims don't convert to christianity easily more that easily that's a suggestion that it's much more difficult okay? um And then uh, together with that ni kwa nini waislamu wanaamini wasipo tushawishi sisi wa Kristo kuwa waislamu kuna adhabu so the second part is why is it that muslims believe that if they don't try to change us to become muslims they are going to be judged I don't know if you want to answer. The oh, you don't have the answer to the second. <laughs> Even me, I, I have the answer to the first. So, so let, let's let's start the first one then, yeah. because this the non from the non they are known. Why why Islam is still a hissy kubadilika kuwa Christian? Why is it that Muslims don't easily convert into Christianity? Yes. Can I start that one? Okay. Yeah. It's not true. Sikweli. There are Muslims by their thousands. Bana maelu ya Kristo walio kuna waislamu wengi walifanya kwa Kristo. Maybe not in Kenya. Pengine si Kenya. But in Iran. Lakini Iran. And in Indonesia. Where you going? Ana huwa anaelekea huko sasa. Indonesia. So I say it's true in Kenya but uh, no, I think the second thing I say because of fear. Yeah. Now, yeah. Fear is fear. Wolf, yeah, yeah. Hof, Because Muslim doctrine Quran is the full of
ya kwamba Qur'an imejaa vitisho and that vitisho is very high everything na katika kila jambo vitisho 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 including the world and the second life both ni vitisho hapa eh watakuwai hapa hapa <laughs> na pia vitisho kwa ulimwengu ujao so vitisho mara mbili hapa na kule because it is here if you convert to christianity aha uh-huh. Sasa hapa ukifanyika kuwa Mkristo kama wewe ni Muislamu, you will be condemned to kill. Wewe sasa Muislamu awaye yote anaamrishwa kukuua. That is the big hell. Yeah. That, that, that is the very heavy foundation of Muslim. Ni msingi thabiti sana wa Uislamu. And nobody want to die. Hakuna na itaa kufa sio. Not only for the Muslim including your parents, brothers sister friends they have tried to teach sasa si tu watu wote uki wanaita ya kwamba ukiwaacha uislamu ukaingia ukristo hata babako mamako marafiki zako wana haki ya kukuua you lose the society position unapoteza nafasi yako kwenye jamii you lose your job unapoteza kazi yako you lose your relation of the friends unapoteza uhusiano na rafiki zako your wife even your wife and your children hata mkeo na watoto then that fear that hope hiyo will be a little difficult for not to come to church inafanya makasa wengi wanaogopa kuingia kanisani yani kujitambulisha even if they want hata kama wanataka yeah for the grace of god lakini neema ya mungu money muslim believers nowadays they are coming to christianity wa aslamu wengi wanakuja katika kristo when they knew that empty hearts wa kujua mioyo yao iko tupu actually the lord is doing muslim world money self to save the people na mungu anafanya mambo mengi kwa waislamu wengi kuwaleta katika huko huko and we like even to visit indonesia by the next week na tuna eh anataka ana, ana, indonesia wiki ijayo to see what What's going on? Kuna kuna Indonesia ndio nchi ambayo ina idadi kubwa kabisa ya Waislamu ulimwenguni. Bali. That's true. The highest Muslim population in the world. Yes, the highest number of Muslims. Yes. Ndio yes. 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 wanaenda huko. Yeah. So what about believe that if they don't convert Christians, they will be judged. They will be condemned. Is that true? Is that part of what they do? Um, Muslims he says why is it that Muslims believe and they have no doubt about this that if they do not convert as Christians to become Muslims yeah. then they will be condemned that Muslims believe that you know the way begin so I see alilewek harap I don't I'm sure understand it beyond that yeah then who is that one yes yeah everyone is hatujalielewa <laughs> Let me see if I can. Okay. Fine, fine. Let me see. the failure of a muslim to convert christian means judgment for me that's what she says there yeah. yeah. okay. 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 i think the best thing is we don't seem to understand it maybe the question i can have your conversation what i'll do i'll i'm going to turn it around to please the yeah. please do yes <laughs> let's take that as true hi tuchukulie hilo kwamba ni kweli that muslims 
ought to seek to convert Christians. Ya kwamba inawapasa waislamu kulingamana na wao kuwageuza wa Kristo. And if not they'll be judged. Na wasifanya hivyo watahukumiwa. Now if that can be done for a false religion kama dini ya uongo inafanya hivyo what about us who have the truth <laughs> na sisi ambao tuko na kweli je even more so pengine kama pengine mtajaribiana na ndugu anaweza kueleza zaidi manake kidogo kuna picha ya lakini nafikiri hoja ya pili muhimu sana sisi wa Kristo tuna ukweli basi tupeleke hilo kweli nje si ndio haya nafikiri maswali tumejaribu kujibu yote hatukusaza hata mmoja 